at that point, Netherlands was putting quite a large, quite a big chunk of money into UNESCO uh, to help with the, as part of their budget for the World Decade on International Law. And they had decided that Dutch offered money to UNESCO to commission a study, this time not by a lawyer, but by uh, somebody with practical experience of dealing with uh, uh, cultural property and so on. Anyway, Lyndall Prot came on behalf of the Dutch and the UNESCO division and asked if I would, through the university, take on a six month research contract um, to investigate the uh, application of the 54 Convention and look at why it wasn't working and uh, how you could make it work properly. Copies were sent to every member state of UNESCO, not just the high contracting parties of um, A54. And from there, it went on to the General Conference, which was held at the end of September, beginning of October. Uh, and it had, was unanimously uh, recognized and supported by the whole General Conference of UNESCO. And um, they, um, they then started campaigning, you know, through member states and consulting. <clears throat> and eventually after about four years, or whatever, we ended up with the, uh, with the second protocol. We did it all over uh, lunchtime during the ICOM annual uh, meeting of the executive board. The representatives of the other body, of the three bodies had been invited, and we had been discussing the morning um, cooperation in this thing. But it, when everybody else went to lunch, George, Dino, Mary, Therese, and myself just sat around and, and wrote a, a heads of agreement which was then put to the other the parties who were all very happy to go along with it. And indeed, the it was even closer on the model, the model of the ICRC, and that we envisaged that the headquarters would be consist of the four uh, secretaries or director generals of the organizations, three of which were all, all always based in Paris, with uh, Marie Therese as the representative of IFLA, which is based in The Hague. Certainly war was the, the key focus of that what was happening. But from the very beginning, um, we realized, uh, I mean, I'm, I think perhaps more, more strongly than almost anybody else, I produced a, major, a couple of major papers on this. And I pointed out that virtually nothing could happen in war that could not happen in uh, in a civilian or natural disaster, or indeed, in fact, in uh, uh, a uh, terrorist or whatever it, it might be. There were three strands to it. The first one was that we would needed to get together arrangements and the way for mutual assistance. Uh, in, at national and international level. Secondly, that there had to be a major impact on training. On the third one, um, one of the major major changes uh, in the second protocol is in relation to government's just responsibilities. The in the fifty four, uh, they had a responsibility to train the military and uh, specialist professionals and so on. Whereas the second protocol uh, calls on governments to, uh, in effect, you know, alert and bring into operation the whole of the population. So we, we saw ourselves working as facilitators, encouraging initiatives at the local and national level in each of those categories. I would certainly like to see 
a, a serious presence in most countries and also a serious um that's across on a geographical basis also like to see um greater coordination within the four or participating bodies possibly people like ikram as well so that you have a, a better picture of the existence of expertise i think that sort of pattern of uh, expertise uh, available across the if you like the whole of the whole of the world or whole of the re region would be useful but i think that that would be complementing or supporting uh, a strong presence at a local level and i think at the national level the emphasis ought to be on again on having the emergency expertise there uh, i think you've got to be give people what something to do to actually practice and so on that's very important so i think you've got to get the balance between having people who have signed up volunteers who can get the beep on their on their on their phone saying there's an emergency will you turn out rather like the life boatmen do um, and also keeping the interest up and doing interesting uh, practical training exercises at the national and in many cases probably at local level as well and then that needs to be supplemented by having a panel of top experts and so you need that side as well and at the other side both the national and local uh, need to be really concentrating on uh, ar arousing um, interest at the at the national level in, in government and all the rest of it.